Hi guys and welcome to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Archive. I usually stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash grimarchive. All of my links are in the channel below. Uh, now this uh, video was requested both by my viewers and then I used it as a sub goal, which I did hit, uh, so I need to deliver. And I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my models. Now I use Vroid Studio, I am a Vroid model. Um, and this is actually, the one you're looking at is actually a second or third attempt at making a Vroid model. Um, it's <laughs> it's a slow process, It's uh, but it's a lot of fun to make. I have zero artistic talent. I cannot draw. Um, but this just goes to show that you don't have to have any of that talent. You don't have to have any of that experience to learn how to do this. It was a bit tricky at first, uh, but I was able to get through it. Now this is not an in-depth tutorial. I'm just going to be trying showing you things, maybe giving some like little hints and stuff that I figured out. If you want a more in-depth tutorial or have any questions, specific questions about anything, I'll be more than happy to answer them either in the comments or I might start making more videos about this to help people become VTubers uh, inexpensively. Every program I use is free. I will be linking them below and you don't have to do everything. I did a lot of things I did in this one, which, uh, I'll explain more about the model I'm going to be creating in a second. Uh, everything I did in this, I, I did some more experimental things that I hadn't done before, uh, to test some things out. I, um, there's some things that didn't work. You'll see, I'm not going to take most of that stuff out. Um, it, it's all about trial and error. There, there's no, there's no harm in doing it. Um, but yeah, so the model we're creating is a separate one for me that I hope to eventually use. The model that I'm using right now looks more like me because I did start out streaming kind of using a webcam and using my IRL face, which some of my viewers knew, and to make this transition a little smoother, I decided to do one that's a little more like me. Uh, the model I'm transitioning to is one of more of how I see Archive, in a sense of I created her design years ago when I first started using the username, um, which I love exact- I absolutely love how she turned out. I think she looks beautiful and I can't wait to see what you guys think. Um, but yeah, so let's let's get into the time lapse. So after opening the program and clicking new and female, I give it a second to load before I jump right into just positioning the eyes and working with the little uh, scrolls it gives me. Um, now one thing I do want to point out here is the lines around her face that you can see the outlines. Uh, those are all personal preference. If you go into general editor at the end, you can mess around with it, go, put it all the way down, which is how it is for my regular model. Um, but I decided to leave these how they are for right now. I did go in and mess with them a little bit after the video ends, um, but I just wanted to mention that since I didn't mention that at all. Uh, so here I'm just getting a feel for the face shape and the eyes and where I want them positioned. And now I'm going into uh, a program called Krita to create the eye textures. Now you don't have to do this again, you can go into booth and get some, but I actually really enjoy making these. Uh, I go in with the lasso tool in order to be able to um, keep the perfect circle and I work with that. Now every time I do this because it is that, it won't mirror it, so I have to copy paste and transform each layer. Uh, now you saw me use the original texture, you can export that um, by just left clicking clicking export. I uh, do that just to kind of get a feel for the size and the positioning of the pupils and then I just kind of go with what I want. Uh, I'm using opacity here and you'll see what I do here for the eye shines is I'm attempting to make them stars to reference my original one. This doesn't work as you'll be able to see later on and I go back in and uh, create just regular circle ones. I position them on the eyes just so I get the placement and then I save both the eyes themselves and then the highlights as two separate files so I can add them in. You can see here I was creating the new um, the new uh, highlights. And then I go in the sclera, I like my own like one uniform shadow. You don't have to touch any of that, it's just personal what I like to do from what I was able to do. Now I'm going in and I'm changing the expressions to have closed mouths for the most part as it just makes it easier to read if you use the expressions. Again, personal preference. Uh, now here I'm messing with the face texture, I'm giving her a little bit of blush and some lip gloss and then I'm messing with scars because she is a kind of fighter or she was, she now researches and is trying to gain knowledge of other dimensions. Every time I do this I'm saving multiple times and I'm putting it back into these into Vroid Studio um, so I can see placements of everything. I, you saw I changed the placement of one of the scars, 
I liked how it looked and so I went with how I was able to do it. Not the best looking scars, uh, I don't know how to create them, but I think they turned out okay for not really knowing what I was doing. Um, and then I move on to the eyebrows. Now I did place the eyebrows over this um, and um, just kind of went ahead and erased where the scars are just so it's placed right. I kind of wish I didn't do this because you'll see later on that uh, whenever I like firm my eyebrows or they move, the scars don't exactly line up because while well, they're moved, that's moving and the face texture isn't. Um, I think it's turning out okay. Uh, now this I am doing differently. I'm keeping it with the grays and whites because I heard when you transfer over into, um, what is it called? Uh, VR chat. There we go. Uh, when you turn it transfer over into VR chat, if you use colors in this stage, it kind of looks a little weird because you're leaving everything as white here in the Vroid program. So I decided this time I'm gonna just try and keep it to the grays and whites and just change the color here like I'm doing now. As you can see, I'm changing my eyelash textures and everything to like a gray and black to make it a little darker. Um, but I actually think they turned out pretty good. And now, uh, double checking all the expressions, you can see here I'm realizing that the eyebrows don't exactly line up, but I, I kind of say, you know what, it's, it's good, it works, I like it, I'm adjusting the eyebrows just a little bit. And now on to the hair. I'm changing it all to white, and then I'm exporting it into Krita once again. Um, I just kind of go with this, I don't, I wish I had a better op way to do the textures, I don't exactly like it. Um, I do like some other textures a little better that I wish I knew how to emulate at least a little bit, uh, but I, I do think what I was able to create works. I just do that little gray idea and blend them together. I actually tried doing these little thin lines for the first time and blurring them, and then I take this tool. Um, when I search Blender, you can see me click it. Uh, it's like a little rake tool, and I just kind of use that uh, to rake down and create a little more texture. Um, I, I just think it adds a little more dimension. I, I don't know. I like it. Um, so I just went with that. And now we move on to the hair. I'm starting off with the bangs. You can see I don't exactly like them at first. Um, I was able to finally create a shape I liked and I don't worry about pulling them all the way back because you can see I can adjust them here. Um, so they all are kind of around the same area. I fill in where I see some blank spaces and I move on to the other side. Uh, you'll see in a second, I go in to test the bones, which is the, how you can see movement in, um, Viewer Studio and the movement with the hair when you export it. Uh, it was a little difficult to learn how to, to do it at first, but it's actually not as difficult as it sounds. Um, I just go into test just to make sure everything kind of looks correctly with the bangs, uh, since those are the that is the part I'm a little m more worried about when it comes to movement. Uh, but I end up, you may see me making some adjustments. I think they look good, and so I make a couple more stylistic ones, uh, pulling the hair back, and then I move on. Uh, to the main hair. Now Archive has short hair kind of like my main model does and then she has kind of a rat's tail coming down. You can see this is my first two or three attempts at it. I end up scrapping uh, the ponytail going down the back idea and have it go down the front instead uh, because even though I was okay with how it turned out uh, you couldn't really see it as much and then it just it, it looked a little weird once I added the rest of the hair um, which I, I do think that what I ended up going with was a lot better. Uh, now here you can use a procedural group which is a, like a large grouping of hair that you could just kind of like turn around in a curtain and you can mess with. Um, well it's okay I just I don't like it as much I don't feel like it gets as full of coverage as I like. Uh, so you can see me here I do it all by hand with the mirroring and I kind of fill in the gaps add a little more dimension to the hair where I can uh, push it back up, make some adjustments. I do end up adjusting the hair again later on, um, especially with the bones, uh, because it did make it look a little weird. I actually didn't catch that until I was starting to record this video. Um, but yeah, and so you can see me now going back and redoing the rat's tail. I'm adjusting the mesh for where it goes, um, and then I'm just making fine adjustments to make it lay right. Uh, you know, making it lay right against the head, laying right against the body. I'm adding a second one for a little more depth and thickness to the hair, and then there we go. Uh, I'm adjusting the bones now, working with it, making sure everything looks good going back and forth. Uh, and I, I actually am really surprised with how the hair turned out. I actually really like it. Um, and you can see once I am finally 
happy with how the hair moves, I move on to make small adjustments to the body, and then I move on to the clothing. Uh, now, in between this, I had to cut out a lot of me going to booth and looking through the ones I had, and I found this outfit that I really liked for her that was really cute. I lined it up with the correct uh, mesh for it, it told me some adjustments to make that you see me doing here uh, that I made, and then I go in, there's a part that goes directly on the body, and then this part that goes here, and I just toggle visibility for the original layer so that uh, the skin shines through. Uh, and I decided instead of having like the unitard sort of thing or the leotard, I decided I wanted her to have shorts instead. So I tried to kind of seamlessly add a little portion of that. Um, I just feel like they look a little better and they fit her a little more. And there, she's complete. <laughs> Okay, so as I said earlier, I was going to show you guys the two programs that I have used and I kind of use on and off uh, that are both free programs that you can use with or without a webcam. You do not need a webcam to become a VTuber. That's something I didn't know you could do until I started doing a lot of research. All right, so this one over here is called V Magic Mirror and this program right here is called VC Face. I've used, I'm using both of my avatars to make it easier. So the newer avatar I just created is V Magic Mirror and she is not using my webcam right now because only one program can use my webcam at a time. And whereas VC Face is. Now, when I first started out with the VTuber, I actually didn't have access to my webcam. So I started using VC Face. As you can see, all she does is she follows the mouse she has automatic blinking. Uh, you can ha toggle for like wind and stuff. And let's see, I have this open my second screen, so I'm going to be looking off to the side a little bit. You can give her a keyboard and pad and she will kind of uh, follow it. Right now she isn't following it because I do have her arms down. Uh, the reason why I did this is because I stream video games and some of the games that I stream, uh, either she doesn't always pick up or she'll stop picking up randomly. Um, so usually I just kind of have her standing there. Um, though whenever possible, I do like to have her hands up and she'll kind of, you can't really see her hand right now. Uh, but if I start, you know, typing randomly, she'll type too. Uh, little customization things that you can look at. Um, I have it transparent and when I want to put this in my OBS for anybody who's thinking about using OBS to stream or you record videos or whatever you're going to do, all you have to do is allow transparency whenever you add it as a game uh, capture. Now with VC Face over here, VC Face must have a webcam. She does track. Um, I have synchronous blinking on, so she tracks my blinking and when I close my eyes and stuff. Um, but on one eye won't close at, this, at the other time. I had some issues with that. Um, but this just makes it a little more seamless. Uh, you can see some buttons I have here. Uh, she's You probably can't read them. This is drift. Uh, whereas if she'll drift back to normal, like let's say I get up and I walk away, which I've done in my streams before because I've had to, uh, she'll drift back to normal and she'll just kind of stare at you. Uh, some of my viewers call it dead inside archive. I find it hilarious. Um, but that's really all it means. I also have mirror motion on, so she just, it's kind of like looking into a mirror when I'm looking at her. I just feel like it gives it a little more, it looks a little more natural that way. It, it, all of this is all personal preference. Now, there is an option in VC face. Uh, in both of these, you can hotkey different expressions. The reason why I don't use that yet, um, I hope to maybe eventually get a stream deck so I can, so that can be a little more immersive, um, is when I use like a number pad, I have both a number pad and, um, I, I have a full size keyboard, so I have a number pad and my numbers above my regular letters. Um, these can't differentiate between them, these programs I found, at least for me. So when I'm playing something like, let's say, one of the games I play a lot is Genshin, and I switch between my characters using those hotkeys, it ends up toggling the expression as well. Or sometimes if I'm tabbed out of the thing, it doesn't register. Um, so for that reason, I never really use expressions. Uh, now with VC Face, you can. I did use it once for stream. I find it, uh, it has an expression, um, oh, what does it call it here? I can, I can pull it up. It, let's see, it's under general settings. I can turn it on. It's called expression detection. So when I turn it on, if I smile, she'll smile. If I do my eyebrows correctly at some point, yeah, she'll get really angry, which I love. One of my emotes is based on that. Um, she'll do that stuff. I just find it to be a little sense of, yeah, you see right there, she was kind of going into scared a little bit. Um, or sometimes when I fur my eyebrows, I'm not really angry, but I'll put her as angry. Um, yeah, so I, I personally don't always use it. I just find it a little more sensitive. It's personal preference for me. I know some people really love to have it. <laughs> see, there she goes, scared. 
Um, I know some people love to have it. I, I do think it's a great idea. I would love to have more expression, but just personally, I just find it a little too sensitive. Even messing with the sensitivity settings, I can't seem to get it right. Um, so yeah, but again, both of these programs are free. If you have access to a webcam, mess around and see what you like. I like both of them for using webcam. I just like some of the features and the things I could do with VC face a little more webcam wise than I did with the magic mirror. But if you don't have access to a webcam, a VMagic Mirror is a, the perfect option. Like I said, my first couple streams with my VTuber, I used that because I didn't have access to my webcam. And these programs are completely free. They're relatively easy to set up and figure out uh, with, VC, with Magic Mirror. You simply upload your file, your VRM, which I did, which I believe I showed I exported. I don't know, I haven't edited the video yet. Um, or you can upload it from VRate Hub. Um, I, I don't have much experience with VRate HUD because I don't need anything but the VRM file. Okay, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna turn off the expressions now because they're distracting me, <laughs> and I'm going to forget to do it before my stream. Uh, but yeah, I mean you can just mess around with it if you decide to do it, and I hope this helped. All right, guys. So that was a little um, time lapse of how I create my VRate models. Again, if you want something more in depth, or maybe you want a tutorial on how to use either VMagic mirror or VC face, uh, let me know in the comments below. There's a bunch of great tutorials out there um, that you can go search up and find yourself, but if you'd like me to go through it as well, I'd be more than willing to create a video like that. Um, so if you did like this video or find it helpful in any kind of way, please give it a like so I know to possibly look at doing more videos like this in the future. Um, and again, if you have any techniques or anything that uh, you suggest that I do instead of something, please let me know. I'm completely new to this. I don't know a lot of what I'm doing though it seems like I might. Uh, any new techniques or something I'm always looking to learn how to improve making my models. And again I get most of my assets and stuff like the clothing off of Booth and if you think the brush or something you want a different brush for the hair or you think creating the eyes are a little too complicated but you want something different Booth has stuff like that too and you can find stuff for free. Anything I use off of there is free. Um, so yeah again got anything to say for me for this or you like the video leave a comment give me a like and all my links are down below join my discord it's a lot of fun <laughs> i got some people in there catch one of my streams if you can um and then i've got a vod channel if you can't catch streams or you prefer to watch it in segments feel free to watch it there uh thanks for joining me and i hope you enjoyed bye guys